Hathura empowers you to build uh, rapidly and like create high quality data APIs for production use cases. And what we have seen with Gen AI is that data sources continue to evolve and Hasura evolves, is evolving as well. So with Gen AI, we have seen new data sources like vector DBs um, come in. And so Hasura is now evolving to not just um, enable our users to use vector DB, but also provide them with a very nice prototyping um, interface um, and a tool where they can quickly build Gen AI application. And I'm like super excited to show you how you can do that. So the first, um, so the way you get started with all of this is that you got to be using Hasura CLI, which is where you have a plugin support for Hasura Notebook. So you can create your Hasura Notebook using uh, using a single command, which is Hasura Notebook create, and um, you get your notebook deployed on Hasura Infra in no time. You can check the status using the status command, and once your notebook is deployed, you are returned with an endpoint that looks something like this, and you have your username and password to the notebook. Of course, you can um, you can have a different password and make it really secure, um, but let's get started. Um, let's demo this thing. So when you take the Hasura notebook endpoint and when, when you run it on your browser, this is the landing page. This is how it looks like. And what, um, what you're getting with this is basically two things. One, you have the notebook capability, which most of the Python developers working on machine learning and data science are familiar with. But there's also a very interesting part of this notebook, which I want to talk about first, which is it lets you convert your um, code on the cells as endpoints. So let's um, take a look at it real quick. So when you launch the notebook, you're going to get this uh, regular interface where you have like your files. And um, if you open your server file, which I'm doing here, you're going to see that there is a cell and it is commented with get and um, um, a URL that you that you would want this to be exposed at. So what we can do is we can say that, OK, that's the code that I want to have serve as, an, as my endpoint. Let me restart in case you have made any changes. And then you can test this out. So restart usually takes like a little bit of time because there is a refresh that is happening at the back end. So um, let me just give this another shot. Yeah, so there you go. So you, this is this is the code that you had in your cell, and now it's basically out there as an endpoint. You can change this, and it, it would get reflected there, right? Um, right. So now uh, let us start. Now that we understand what Hasura Notebook is, let's really quickly build something live here um, and see the value of it, right? So the first thing that we'll have to do is set up um, some Postgres um, data. Actually, let's let's talk about like what we want to build, right? So let's say I have some um, products and let's say I'm an e-commerce website. I want to enable my customers to not just search for the products using keyword searches, but I want to bring in the capability of Gen AI now to my search, which is to make my search a lot more smarter. So typically when you are starting off with like a use case like this, you have an application, there is a database that is powering your application, the backend. Uh, database that's um, that could be on Postgres or something else. So let us assume that we have a database in Postgres, and let's say it's a very simple database which has like ID, name, and description. Okay, so now that's the first part of it. Um, description is something where we want to now, uh, you know, enable contextual search and more smart analysis using LLM. So let's head over to a vector database because I need to store these textual, um, these text entities somewhere so that I can really, I can fetch it really quickly and then feed it to my LLM as context, do all of that prompt engineering and get like build something really useful. So 
you can use um, vector database of your choice. Right now, I'm going to be using VV8. Great. So when you log into VV8, it lets you um, set up VV8 clusters free for some, uh, like, I think, 14 days. Yeah. Uh, so I have one which is already up and running. Um, I want to really quickly show you what it gives you. So it's going to give you the cluster URL. It's going to give you the API key. And this is what we're going to be using, right? Um, so from our homepage on Jupyter Notebook, we're going to we're going to open set up VV8. This is already built or templated project for you to like uh, pick it up and play around. So you you basically plug in these values here. You plug in your VV8 URL, your API, and also your Open AI key. Um, and the reason why I'm using OpenAI's key here is because I'm 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 going to say that I want VV8 to vectorize my incoming text and store it. And so the way um, you store something in VV8 is you basically create these schemas. This is my product vector schema, and I'm having some configuration like how, what is my similarity metrics and um, some of the thresholding stuff. Um, I'm going to be querying, making my contextual searches on name and description. And the way I say that I want my contextual searches to be running on this is by saying that I want um, I, I want to vectorize this. I want to vectorize this using OpenAI embeddings. And once that is uh, vectorized and stored in VV8, then I can do like really quick retrieval and augment my LLM queries. So this is available. Once you execute this cell, um, I can do that even right now. So once you execute this cell, you're going to have a, uh, almost like a database available in VBA. Then next, what you want to do is you want to connect this VBA data source with Hasura. So you'll have to come to the data tab, uh, come to manage, you'll have to come here and add a VV8 agent. Um, and I already have this, but if you if you have to do it like the first time by yourself, you're again going to be needing Hasura CLI. So you can create a Hasura connector for VV8. Like you can deploy using a command. Where you, you give the name and you give the GitHub repo of um, your connector. So I've already done that. So I'm not going to do this step again. And you can once once you have connected the agent, you can you can very quickly also uh, using connect database have that DB um, object. So you can have that and you can track that. So I have already done all of this step. So I'm not going to do that. And um, yeah, and a Postgres database is also ready. So these are some of the steps that I already processed and just kept them handy because we're like uh, we're going to be short of time on this call. So um, next thing, um, let's say if I want to start using this vector, this vector DB for anything, I I I basically these vectors. If you think about okay, let's just talk about talk a little bit about these vector databases, right? Um, these are a new kind of data store which stores just your vectors. They do not have any information about your data model. Like in our case, it does not have any understanding of the, your products, your sellers, or anything like that. And so if you want to now start leveraging this vector database in a more powerful way, you have to, you have to use Hasura to define this relationship. And let's say if you're not doing that and if you're trying to use the extra metadata support that some of the vector DBs provide. What you're signing up for is doing a lot of data copy and data sync, and you can get into data staleness issues, and um, that's going to be super complicated. So the best way for us to go forward is to use a relationship where all of the application data stays in Postgres. All of the vector data stays in vector DB. That's what they are best suited for. Um, and we define a relationship to connect these two data sources. 
It's going to be an object relationship. It's just like a one-to-one -one relationship. And once this relationship is available, I can now start thinking of really complex and interesting use cases like setting up an auto vectorization because Hasura provides events, the event triggers that you can leverage. So the way I can do this is by going back to my server Jupyter notebook, I can define some logic here, which in this case is this handle insert, where I'm saying that every time a record, let's say a new product gets created in your Postgres table, you get that information and you are, um, you are having this query to write to a vector database where it gets auto vectorized. So I have set all of this up already. One interesting thing is that um, because this notebook is, um, it has username and uh, password, you will have to set authorization in your head in your header. And um, we have instructions on how you can get this value. Um, so for now, I'm just going to skip through that and say that, okay, we have our events ready. So now let's go back to our database state. I have Postgres table, which is empty right now. I have my vector DB, which is again empty right now. And I have some synthetic data, which is ready to be fed in. So I'm just going to run this script. Okay real time and it's gonna insert 52 rows. Let's go and look at the state of a table. Okay, so we have 52 rows. Yep, 52 rows inserted into our Postgres. Let us look at our vector DB. Yeah, there you go. So your vector DB got updated near real time, which means if you have two functionalities on your app, they are in sync um, at, um, and everything gets updated instantly. So now let's take it a step forward and let's really go ahead and build that smart LLM search that we were talking about, right? So we would go back to our server.py where we have this templated code already available for you. Let me really quickly run you through what this does, right? So that you understand the power of this. So this is a business logic that we are creating. What we are saying here is that we're gonna be we are gonna in we are gonna expect the user to ask us a question and on the question that the user is asking, we are going to first query a vector database and we are going to pick out and we're going to pick 10 most relevant results. And then we are going to feed that to our LLM by creating this context. So what we are doing here is augmenting context to our LLM prompt to get like best out of um, the large language model. So we have this available. What I would need to do next is go to action, create an action query out of it, which is nothing but um, it, it's, a, it's a query type, takes user query as input, gives me um, a string as an output. And again, my web hook is going to be this URL of, uh, of my connector. And then we will have to suffix that with invoke and the handler name, which um, sorry, this one handler name that we defined here. It can be anything. You can define whatever handler names you want. Again, we'll have to provide the authorization. Um, LLMs sometimes can be slow. 
you can set timeout based on you can have like a reasonable timeout based on your use case. So you save all of this. I already have this ready. So I'm not going to be saving this. And so when I come back to my API console, I see that I have this action available. Now I'm going to query for um, what are the most durable products in my catalog and why. So imagine like you're giving your customers the power to not just search for products, now have, now even ask uh, more contextual uh, stuff on top of it, right? Yeah, so there you go. There's um, the most durable products are the hiking backpacks, um, steel bottles, and some Echo Frost Fridge eggs, which sounds like they're durable. And it also gives you the reason why. And it's doing all of this looking at the description. Yeah, that was for the demo. That was awesome. Uh... I've seen this several times already. I've been part of, you know, doing some of the educational content for this, but it still impresses me every single time uh, with what we can do inside of Asura using these LLMs. So cool. And of course, a thousand different things going on in my head of uh, ways of being a little bit lazier and uh, getting AI to do more things for me.